Hey, welcome back guys. This is the second video of our F117 crash playlist. So if you haven't watched the first crash story, give it a look. Plus don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned with us. So here we go. In February 999, 12 F117s touched down at Aviano Air Base, Italy to support possible NATO air operations over the former Republic of Yugoslavia. In March 999, those same 12 F-117s and pilots led the first wave of attacks of NATO Operation Allied Force. On first night, March 27, 999, F-117A was returning to Aviano after dropping both of its bombs on enemy targets using call sign Vega 31. As autopilot guided itself home along the predetermined exit route through enemy airspace, the unthinkable occurred. Although it has always been known that the F-117A is merely low observable and not invisible, the past performances of F-117A had hinted that it might end its career like its skunkwork sibling the SR-71 Blackbird with zero enemy rounds out of thousand fires finding their mark. Suddenly, a Russian-made SA-3 Neva surface to air missile SAM exploded very close to the F-117A at about 8.51 pm local time. The blast caused enough damage to that aircraft went out of control. The pilot inside stated he experienced enormous negative g-forces potentially as high as five times the force of gravity. I remember having to fight to get my hands to go down towards the ejection seat hand grips, he explained. I always strap him very tightly, but because of the intense g-forces, I was hanging in the straps and had to stretch to reach the handles. While he recalls the intense strains involved in getting his fingertips to the ejection handles, he said he doesn't remember making the conscious decision to eject from the aircraft. Am I going to know when it's time to get out? Is the question on every fighter pilot's mind, he said. The one fragment of his whole event I can't remember is pulling the handles. God took my hand and pulled it. Uninjured except for minor cuts and scraps. The Nighthawk pilot describes the ejection as violent. Although slightly disoriented after the high speed ejection, he was very aware he had just bailed out deep within Siberian territory. It didn't panic me, he said. I just got very busy doing what I needed to do. After his parachute had deployed, he said immediately started walking the rescue. I remember thinking, why wait until I hit the ground, let's go for it now. He explained. Because of the potential that the Serbs were also monitoring various radio frequencies, the pilot had to minimize his radio transmissions and calls for help. After making radio contact with NATO forces, he used the remaining minutes of his descent to survey the land, looking for landmarks, areas of cover, and a landing site. Parachuting into a freshly plowed field approximately 50 yards from the road and rail track intersection immediately began bearing the life raft and other survival equipment automatically deployed during the ejection sequence. There was some activity in that intersection, thank god no one actually saw me come down, he said. According to media reports, the downed bandit was between 2 and 10 miles west of the main wreckage of F-117. Vega 31 quickly hunkered down into a holdup site in a shallow culvert 200 yards away from his landing site. During the next six hours, many questions began racing through his head. A very important part of the whole combat search and rescue operation is to minimize transmission on radio. He said, however, for the downed guy, it's very unsettling to not know what's going on. You're thinking, do they know I'm here? Do they know my location? Where are the assets and who is involved? What's the plan? Are they going to try to do this tonight? As the unknowns that are unsettling. But amid this road, 
Race of Thoughts, the Air Force officer, had something tangible to get him through. Six hours of solitude amidst barking search dogs, passing headlights, and pursuit trucks roaring up and down the nearby road. An American flag under his flight suit and against his body. Given to him by an airman. As he strapped in for his mission, he secured the flag before he took off, and that's where it remained until his return, providing him a calming reassurance throughout. A moment like this is a prayer in object form, said the pilot. Her giving that flag to me was saying I'm giving this to you to give it back to me when you get home. For me it was representative of all the people who I know were praying, said the pilot. It was a piece of everyone, and very comforting. It helped me not to let go of hope. Hope gives you strength. It gives you endurance. I knew I was ferried deep into Siberian territory, said the Air Force pilot. I had guessed my position was within 20 miles of Belgrade. Not happy though, considering the risk involved in a combat search and rescue that deep into Siberian territory. The pilot said he purposely wasn't optimistic about a timely extraction and was prepared for a potential capture. F-117 crashed approximately 48 kilometers, about 30 miles northwest of Belgrade, Yugoslavia. The pilot was stranded within a 10 mile radius of the wreckage. Vega 31 was alone with help on the way. Because he is still operational pilot flying missions, he, the identities have been protected. Pilots are referred to as their call signs on their missions, Vega 31. So let's continue the story of the events in the next video. We will talk about how he was rescued, further interviews when he got back home and more interesting stories. So subscribe and stay notified not to miss the next video.